Welcome to the first video tutorial of Medici Studio. We always ask ourselves how to do things faster, better and in a more flexible way for the artist. In this case, how to sculpt in a quick and comfortable way and then paint that model for a possible use in a video game engine. So it has to be optimized for real time. Today, we are going to show you the making of of this experimental project and our conclusions. We hope this possible production pipeline could be useful for the community. In this case, we have used Blender, ZBrush and 3D Code to solve this problem. Let's see then the making of of how to combine these programs, how to pass information from one program to another, starting by sculpting in Blender, optimizing in ZBrush, texturizing in 3D Code and returning to Blender for rendering. This image that you are watching in the background is the final result. It's a character we did to test how to combine these different tools and to look for a more efficient and flexible way to create 3D art for video games. Let's see the final Blender file first. This is the last file. It is a pretty low poly model with some lights, the camera and the setting of the material. In the second place, I am going to show you a diagram where we synthesize the steps to pass from one software to another. In this process, we first sculpt in Blender with a dynamic topology. Then we exported in OBJ to ZBrush to optimize the model using the C remeasure automatic retopologizer and the projection tool. Once this is done, the low poly model of ZBrush is exported in OBJ and it is imported into 3D code to texturize it. Finally, in Blender, the same low poly model of ZBrush is imported and a material is created using the textures exported from 3D code. We add the lights and the camera. We will begin by watching the process in Blender. The important thing to keep in mind here is to use the dynamic topology to add and remove volume quickly without worrying about polygon stretching. Also, check that the symmetry option has to be active. The brushes that we have used the most are the clay strips and the smooth. Do not worry too much if the model doesn't look like we want at the beginning. We use the references in the Lumis Anatomy book to correct the proportions of the model. You must have patience and move forward step by step. At the time of making the ear, we downloaded a 3D model from, Red, from BlendSwap and made a Boolean union. Then we softened the union. Once we have finished the sculpting process, we export the model in OBJ, activating the option to export only the selection. We do this to be able to import the model in ZBrush and perform an auto retopo. Once inside ZBrush, we import the model, we duplicate the suit tool, then we go to the geometry section, C remeasure, and we choose the amount of vertices we want. In our case, we have set it to 30,000 30, vertices. Now, we'll have the original model of Blender with many details on one side and the model with the auto retopo on the other. What we want to do now is to rescue the details of the high poly model of Blender and transfer them to the low poly model. But first, we are going to do the unwrapping. The wrapping is necessary so that at the end of the process we can export a texture called normal map that will help simulate that the model with auto retopo has more details of what it really has in the geometry itself. In our case we use the UV master of ZBrush indicating through the painting where we want and where not to make the cuts in the geometry 
and thus be able to perform the unwrap. Now if this is done, we can pass the detail of the high poly model to the low poly model. For this, we must to divide the low poly model several times with the subdivide tool and then project the details of the Blender model to the model with auto retopper. This is done by making the two models visible and activating the project all button. Once this is done, we create the normal map. The normal map is an RGB image with the information of the details of the high poly model. To do this, we go to the normal map section and press create normal map. Then we export it. Before finishing working with ZBrush, what we want is to export the low poly model, since it is the one we are going to use to render. Because it is lighter, it has all four sided polygons, it is more optimized for real time and it is also prepared with the unwrapping and the amount of polygons to be able to paint in 3D code. To export it, we click on export. Now we have an optimized model with the UV and a normal map. Now to be able to paint the model, we'll use 3D code which allows us to paint several channels at once, color, roughness, metalness. Here we must import the low, po the low poly model and paint it. To do that, we choose the option Paint UV Mapped Mesh. Once the 3D model is imported, we import the normal map. The normal map must be mirrored vertically because ZBrush handles it differently, so you have to change that and save it as PNG format. 3D code doesn't import files in PSD. For painting the skin, we have created several layers. A base layer for the skin, another for the muscles, another for the, for the dirt spots. The skin is not of the same color. It should have more greenish, reddish or yellowish colors. These changes are what make it look more realistic. It's very important to set the roughness of the brush well so that the skin has more roughness and the blood less. This will create the feeling that the blood is wet. Once finished painting, we must export the textures by clicking on Export Objects and Textures. We choose the Blender Cycles preset in the options and eliminate the emission and reflection texture because we, we don't need them. After exporting the textures, we open Blender again and import the low poly model that we exported from ZBrush. We set the renderer to cycles, we create a new material with the shader principle BSDF, we load the diffuse texture in the base color channel, the roughness texture in the roughness slot as, as non-color data. Finally, we connect the normal map through a normal vector map to the normal slot. Then we set the subsurface scattering to 0 0.1 to simulate the behavior of the skin. We also add two airy lights on each side of the character and the camera in front. We had combining all these softwares, we hope you find it useful, 
If you like it, please share it and we'll see you in the next video.